Hello everyone and welcome to Etsy Up Holiday Edition. We are so happy you're here. My name is Isabella and I work on the community team here at Etsy and I will be your host for today's event. So Etsy Up is a virtual seller event with everything you need to succeed this holiday season. Today's going to be jam packed with inspiration and insights to help you get your shop discovered and grow. After the ups and downs of the past few years, we're excited to get together and celebrate all the hard work that Etsy sellers put into their businesses every single day. You all have so much to be proud of. So if you're joining us directly from the Etsy Up landing page, you'll find the agenda, holiday resources, and many helpful links on this same page. If you're joining us from YouTube, hello, head over to EtsyUp.com for access to all of the helpful resources that go along with the sessions from today. Throughout today's event, you can engage with the Etsy community using the live chat. This is a great opportunity to connect with other Etsy sellers and be sure to look out for some fun surprises during the stream. Okay, let's get started. I never really knew what to do when I was at school. I loved just playing around with different materials and different colors. I began by putting together two or three discs just to make a small wall hanging, and it just progressed from there. Hi, my name's Tim, and my shop is We Are Lunarium. I make geometric wall hangings made out of plywood. We were renovating our own house, and we needed something for the wall that was a little bit different, so I just made something for myself. And someone was like, oh, you should sell it on Etsy. I was like, oh my God, I should sell it on Etsy because I love Etsy. I just started doing it as like a side business when I was working in retail. And then during the pandemic, I was furloughed for six months, which gave me more time to produce more for my small room in my house. They began very simple and I've added different colors and styles and shapes and they have grown in scale. The studio space was built during lockdown because we were running out of space in the room. Luckily, my stepdad is a builder and my partner's dad is an architect. We built it the biggest we could in the garden that we had. Having a nice place to go to every day inspires me because it's calm and I can be creative. My process is quite natural really, so I just start with pieces and I work with what I've got and have the play around. I enjoy making things look nice. This chandelier style one, it's got like the metal rings, the ceramic discs. We added the tassels on just to make it look a little bit more bohemian looking. It's like a bit of everything to create this one piece. The Etsy Design Awards means quite a lot to me and this is one of my better selling products. I thought, right, I'm going to send something that people love already. So I just didn't think that I would hear back. I thought, oh, it's fine, I'll give it a go. Like, you never know, do you? And then I got an email saying, oh, you're a finalist. So I was like, oh my God, is this like a fake email? <laughs> Hello. Hello. Hi, Tim. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I need to tell you that you're the 2022 grand prize winner of the Etsy Design Awards! No. Yeah. no, I'm not. Yes, you really? are! I don't think it's sunk in yet that I've actually won. I was like, shocked. I didn't know what to say. I guess it's just the validation of someone saying, your work is good. You know, it makes me feel really proud of what I've done. Being now a design award winner, that's really weird to me because I've never really thought of myself as a designer. Like, if I can do it, anyone can do it. I just enjoy the evolution of what I've been making so I can see what it's come from and I'm just excited to see what it could be. I just love that story so much. One of my favorite things about working for Etsy and having the opportunity to speak directly with sellers is hearing wonderful stories and moments of connection. I honestly can't get enough of these stories and I'd actually love to hear yours. So please let me know in the chat about a special moment that you've had with one of your buyers. Here are a couple of my favorite stories that sellers have shared over in our community forums.
All right, Paper Florist shared, I have one customer who has ordered from me many times. We call each other BFF. Oh my gosh, so sweet. And every once in a while, she will message me just to say hi and check up to see how I'm doing. My BFF has ordered from me 10 times over the years, and everything she has ordered is personalized and involved sending proofs and whatnot, so we've always done a lot of chit chat over the years. I have a few other customers who write once in a while just to say hi, which makes me feel good and leads me to believe I'm doing something right. Yeah, you are, that's so sweet. <laughs> All right, Ice Maiden says, a few years ago, a customer from Alaska, I'm in the UK, ordered a necklace for me for her son. She messaged me to tell me why it was significant and we got to chatting. Well, once we started, we couldn't stop and our messages turned into lengthy emails. And then when she and her family came to the UK, we all met up. We are now very close friends and manage to talk frequently despite the time difference. I love that so much. <laughs> And as a reminder to anyone who is just now joining us, be sure to chat with us throughout the event. Introduce yourself and tell us the name of your Etsy shop and what you sell. And be on the lookout because in the chat, there will be some fun surprises. Up next, we have Dana Isom Johnson, our Etsy trend expert, and she is joined by Nicole Lewis, owner of Art to the Extreme, and Candice Luter, owner of Shop Candice Luter, to discuss this year's top trends from our Marketplace Insights report. Take it away, Dana. Hello everyone and welcome. I'm Dana Isom Johnson, trend expert here at Etsy. Today I'm joined by two amazing Etsy sellers who I adore and they are great at taking marketplace insights and using them to inform their product and brand strategy. In today's session, we'll walk through some of this season's hottest trends and really dive into how to use this information. Shall we dig in? Let's do it. Okay, so first, <laughs> welcome to Nicole and Candace. I'm so happy to have you guys here with us. Thank you Thank so you much for so having much. us. <laughs> okay, so I want you to start off by telling me a little bit about yourself, how long you've been on Etsy, all that good jazz. Candace, let's start with you. So I actually got started as a DIYer, like a lot of people, uh, when Pinterest was coming out, and I thought, what the heck? Let me just throw my stuff out there on Etsy and started making stuff for myself. I think being a DIYer was great, but it really didn't allow me to be the creative that I really wanted to be. Mm -hmm. So in about 2019, I launched my shop, Shop Candace Luter, and yeah. the rest is history. Wow. Okay, Nicole, how about from you? Yeah, so I'm an Etsy OG. I have been on Etsy since 2007. Mm -hmm. And at the time I was a teacher, I was teaching elementary art and we worked a lot with crayons. and. Yep recycled bits of nubs and stubs and I said there has to be a better way there has to be a better way to make a fun and functional crayon and now I create all kinds of customized personalized crayons love them love both of your shops so much uh, a few weeks ago we released our holiday marketplace insights report which includes a ton of great information to help you prepare your shop for the holiday rush after another challenging year shoppers are craving normalcy and community since we all saw a disruption to our holiday traditions the last couple of years, we expect people to revive and refresh traditions like entertaining at home and gift exchanges. Although many people may feel the strain of tighter budgets this season, people still want to celebrate and enjoy time more than ever. This is why items that help build meaningful gatherings and thoughtful gift giving are so important this season. We anticipate themes of gratitude to permeate the holidays, along with personalization, quality craftsmanship, and appreciation for nature. While shoppers may prioritize value and one-of-a-kind appeal, they're also looking for some festive fun. And this is a great opportunity to show off how a little sparkle can go a long way when it comes to celebrating in style. Some of the top trends that I'm most excited about, y'all know this is, this is my thing, I get so pumped, um, but some of them that I'm really loving are about combining eclectic and traditional aesthetics. So integrating non-traditional colors into holiday decor that are bold and bright colored clothing. As you can see, I'm loving the last one with this matching set, oh yes. Uh, this outfit is directly from one of my favorite Etsy sellers, Pixie Won't 
play. And of course, I have to shout out Lingua Nigra, who I love, who made my hoops. Okay, let's turn it back over to you ladies. So Nicole and Candice, what trends are you personally excited about? Let's start with you, Nicole. I am personally excited about anything personalized. Personalization is not going away. It's my specialty. And personalized items that have bright, bold colors, just like my original rainbow crayons, mm -hmm. are definitely going to be in for the holidays. Yeah, and you know what? I have to say, not going away, and also one of the top reasons that shoppers come to Etsy in the first place. We are the destination for personalization. Yes. So this is your opportunity to shine with that. <laughs> uh, Candace, what about you? I am loving that we're getting back to entertaining at home, mm -hmm. having parties, going to parties. And so Etsy to me is the perfect place to find a gift for a host and get into that customization. Yeah. So sometimes I hear from sellers that they can struggle a bit uh, to go to the Marketplace Insights and really integrate these trends into their shop and strategy. So how do you ladies incorporate this information? Because you do it so well. <laughs> Candace, let's start with you. You know, it's hard to determine when to be trendy and when to be a trendsetter. Mm -hmm. And so I'm a big believer on staying true to yourself. And so I think part of that is not only staying true to yourself, but also advocating what you do really well. And so besides the trends, you know, we're coming up on the holidays, you can really promote your on-time delivery and things like that that just brings that ease to buyers because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, they just want to cross that list off. So I think if you just promote your skill sets, you're going to be just fine. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I love that, staying true to yourself because you, you raise a really great point. Trends are wonderful. Hi, it's my entire job. But you have to integrate what works best for you. Okay, you tell me about your thoughts on this. So I am the queen of colors. Mm -hmm. I am very excited about the trends bringing back those bright, festive colors that are yep. bold. And it makes a great punch of color on a holiday dinner table in a stocking stuffer and incorporating yeah. that color, especially into your marketing, your photography that you use within your shop. Those are ways that I personally shine with art to the extreme. Yeah. And I like, love seeing other sellers incorporating those themes and motifs into their product photos to shine for the holidays. Love that. Those are such great tips and ideas. The Marketplace Insights Report can definitely inspire updates big and small, ideas for new products, ways to market and merchandise your shop to attract more seasonal shoppers, and tips for adding seasonally relevant top search terms to your tags, your titles, and item descriptions. And if you're inspired by the report to create new products, try and time the release of your inventory to take advantage of the holiday rush. Now, as we've already talked about, two popular trends we expect to stick around throughout the holiday season are customization and personalization. This is one of the top reasons, like I said, that shoppers come to Etsy. They want to deliver thoughtful and meaningful gifts to the people they love. These trends have been on the rise for the past few years, especially since 2020, when we saw an increase in gifting from afar. Now, let's take it back to you, ladies. Nicole, you have a collection of personalized items available in your shop from name crayons to pet portrait crayons, both of which I've received and I've <laughs> loved uh, with my little mojo. Um, what inspired you to start personalizing your items and have you seen an increase in demand for these types of of items to, for your buyers? I have definitely seen an increase in demand for this. People want gifts that are personalized, that they can have that wow factor when they open them. Mm -hmm. And I love that people have been able to incorporate the personalized crayons into their family holiday traditions. I have buyers coming back year after year buying the same set of name crayons for each of their stockings because it's become a holiday tradition for the family. Yeah, and almost like you can bring the family together with those crayons. Like you can make things together and then it is time to stock up because you you take the crayons all the way down. It's that gift that anybody can use, whether you're yeah. one or 101. Everybody likes the color. Everybody likes crayons. It's a fun way to 100%. interact with each other. A hundred percent. I love that. Okay, so Candace, you also offer custom mirrors and wall hangings. Can you tell us more about that and why you decided to offer customization within your product line. I'm a big believer that there's no one size fits all when it comes to design for furniture and home decor. And so I think that's the great thing about Etsy that sets itself apart from other retailers mm -hmm. is you really get that custom curated look for your space. So, you know, whether it's shape, color, size, whatever it is, I think it's important to educate people that custom doesn't have to mean expensive. Yes. It just is meaning you're curating. And yes. so I think when you can walk clients through that process and hold their hand, you get that personal one-on-one -on -one touch that they 
just can't get anywhere else. A hundred percent. And it's also, I feel like when you step into someone's home, especially as we start entertaining again, right? And you have those conversation starter bits, like your, your mirrors, oh my gosh, love, crazy about, also your crayons. <laughs> But these are really special pieces that stick out beyond all the rest and can start those conversations with your guest and, and really have that wow factor. Absolutely. Yeah. So, okay, I know people watching may sell products where integrating trends might be a little challenging or maybe not even possible at all. But I want to remind everyone that there are many ways that you can use this information. The Marketplace Insights can help guide your product photography, your social media strategy, your titles, your tech and so much more. Now, Nicole and Candace, how do you personally use trend information? Where are the trends showing up for you in your shop? Um, let's start with you, Nicole. So the trends for me are showing up in my product design photos. Mm -hmm. I'm making sure I'm changing up my photos that are shown in my shop. Yep. Using those bright colors that are the trending colors of the season for that pop of color to draw the eye down to your products, putting my best sellers on the front page, and sometimes incorporating the trends of snowflakes and Santas and the things that are coming back each year. And that's easy to switch out for my products mm -hmm. just in the background, just as that little pop of holiday. And that's such a great solution because, again, not everyone can take on all the trends. But these things like product photography or other little tricks that still allow the trend to show up, but not overpower your product. You also want the buyer to be able to visualize this gift in their home. So even mm -hmm. showing ways that it's displayed, maybe in a stocking with those colorful yeah. touches. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Candace, how about you? So yeah, it's just about being true to yourself. And then, you know, where do you want to lead those trends at? And so like you talked about before with the photography, it's about how you style that the buyer automatically connects. They're on trend mm -hmm. just based on the way that you have it. So mm -hmm. we Love do the that. Same. So you don't have to let the trend go. It's just about how you can be creative in terms of the use. Right. Okay. Before we go, I wanted to share a few quick tips to get you ready for the holidays, which are just around the corner. First, I want you to extend holiday sales by stocking festive items as early as possible to reach that first wave of shoppers. Try out new hues to mix up the traditional holiday color palette, like Etsy's 2022 trending colors, shades of pink and emerald green. I love those colors so much. Tap into wellness themes when offering gifts, including gift sets and items for self gifting. And finally, Consider sustainability and how you can attract environmentally conscious shoppers by using recycled materials, creating items with multiple uses, and offering high quality products with made to last. I want to bring this up really quickly because, Candace, I don't know if the world knows this, but just as a quick reminder, you were the 2021 winner of the Etsy Design Awards, and I did not know that this was the winning mirror, but I... I, I love Candace so much. I follow her on Instagram. And I noticed that you posted one day that in one of your mirrors, it came with a chip. And many times I feel like our sellers, in terms of your materials, you can get items that are not perfect. But rather than you tossing that mirror, tell us what you did with that. Yeah, so it's been an interesting process in just production. You don't know what you don't know. And so as we began to get busier, we started to see damage and things coming through the production line that we just couldn't use. And mm -hmm. I couldn't figure out why these scratches were coming through the mirrors. Well, by the time we determined our old building with brick shaking down on our mirrors, I thought, well, what would happen if I put texture on top of this? Because to me, it still had life left in it. Mm -hmm. And I think that that setback definitely became a comeback. Um, and so putting texture on it, gilding it, it happened to be the, the winner of the Etsy Design Awards. The winner. <laughs> We're talking about the winner, OK? So this is, I think this is just such a wonderful tip because don't be discouraged should you have any materials that appear to be like they need to be tossed. Like keep that sustainability tip in your mind and bring out that creative juice and figure out how you can turn something that maybe doesn't look perfect into something really beautiful. Uh, I just want to thank you guys so much today for joining me and talking all things holiday. Are there any final words in terms of wisdom that you would love to share with your fellow community members? I think one of the things that I talk about the most is that it really does take a village. And us creatives, we need that village. And so I would just encourage anyone on Etsy, if you're thinking about taking the jump, you're already having, you already have a shop and you're continuing to grow, we are your village. We're here to help you. 
please tap in and lean into that. Etsy has so many tools and resources to help you succeed, and we want to see you do just that. Love that. Okay, how about for you, Nicole? The holidays can be incredibly overwhelming for sellers. Yeah. So really kind of pinpointing what do you like to do best? Mm. Where do you want to focus your time? And really do what you like to do and maybe try to outsource the items that take up too much of your time or you don't like to do. That way it's freeing up more time for you to focus on the holiday and the products that need to come out. Such great tips. Thank you again for being with me thank today. You. Really thank appreciate you. it. Uh, thank you both again and thanks to everyone who tuned in. Please check out the Marketplace Insights Report, which is linked in the agenda. There will be a follow-up trend session in the seller event space taking place later in September, as well as many others. You can find that linked on the Etsy Up homepage. So register right now before spots run out. Thank you all, and I'll hand it back over to our host, Isabella. Thank you, Dana, Nicole, and Candice for such an insightful discussion. Personally, my favorite trend is kitchen kitsch. So as we see more of a spotlight on hosting and dining lately, we can expect to see increased demand for playful kitchen items from the past. For example, vintage coffee makers or dinner plates and cheerful cookie jars. I actually just got a set of salt and pepper shakers myself. Uh, I'm just loving like all the retro fun pieces. Let us know in the chat what trend you're most excited about and do you have any predictions of your own? And speaking of trends, I want to give a quick shout out to one of my favorite Etsy sellers whose amazing jacket I'm wearing today. This tailored blazer was handcrafted from a vintage 1960s quilt. What? Come on. And it comes from one of our Etsy Design Award winners, Dee Dee, from her shop, WB Tham. Up next, we have a very special guest, Katrina, joining us from Adobe. So Adobe has released a product called Adobe Express that makes it easy to design social media content, logos, and more with tons of professionally designed templates. So Katrina will be sharing her expertise about how to bring your product listings and your shop branding to the next level using Adobe Express. And of course, all registered Etsy Up guests received a four month free premium trial offer in their Etsy Up reminder emails this morning. So be sure to check your inbox for that. But if you missed it, don't worry. You can still request an offer code through our holiday resources on EtsyUp.com until September 10th. Now I'll pass it over to Katrina. Welcome. Hi, my name is Katrina and I'm a digital creator for Adobe Express. I got my start in content creation from making fashion and lifestyle vlogs on YouTube while I was in college. And since then, I've taken content creation full time, working for startups, partnering with brands, and now creating content for Adobe. As a content creator, I know how hard it can be to stand out online. And I can imagine that as an Etsy seller, you encounter some of those same challenges when it comes to your products. And sometimes the best way to stand out is by improving your marketing and your branding. In today's session, I'm going to teach you how to elevate your brand and stand out as an Etsy seller using Adobe Express. This is Adobe's newest tool for creators to quickly and easily create standout graphics to help build your brand, business, or just for fun. It's super easy to use and you do not need any design experience to get started. When selling on Etsy, first impressions are everything. It's important to make sure that your branding is cohesive. As a shopper, when I browse through listings, one of the things that convinces me to buy from a seller is how their shop and product listings are presented. I find a shop that has a consistent brand identity and a completely filled out profile helps build the shop's trust and credibility. So whether you're new or a seasoned seller, make sure your profile picture, banner, shop descriptions, and product imagery are cohesive with your brand. With Adobe Express, it's incredibly easy to make sure your shop is consistently on brand with the help of the brand kit. You can create a brand kit and pre-save your logos, brand colors, and fonts so that you can quickly apply them to any project. You can also browse the template library for banners, profile pictures, and other graphics to use and customize with your brand assets with just one click. 
Since most customers will likely see your product listing before visiting your shop, it's important to include good quality images of your product and accurate product descriptions. Make sure your products are well lit and showcased so the customer knows exactly what they're going to get and that the product description matches. Show your products up against a clean background with little distractions or in context to show what the product looks like in action. You can also enhance your photos in Adobe Express by adjusting things like exposure, contrast, or vibrancy. Don't have any fancy backgrounds or are short on time? My favorite way to level up my product photography is to use the Remove Background tool in Adobe Express to cut out the product and replace the background with a solid color or stock image from Adobe Stock to make my product photo look more polished. You can also use mock-ups from the Adobe Stock Photo Collection to showcase them in real-life locations and scenarios. A memorable brand is important to stand out from the sea of sellers and get customers to remember you and keep coming back to your shop. Whether if you're just setting up your Etsy shop or you're a seasoned seller, an important part to standing out on Etsy is an effective marketing strategy. Etsy sellers can promote their shops to get sales, but finding time for everything can be a challenge. With a streamlined workflow in Adobe Express, you can spend less time marketing and more time making the things you love. When creating content for your shop, it's important to keep everything on brand and cohesive. Quickly brandify your assets by keeping all of your logos, fonts, and colors all in one place. Whether if it's a folder on your desktop or in the Adobe Express brand kit, keeping your brand assets within reach will save you time during the design process. Another way to save time and streamline your workflow is to templatize all of your content. Repurpose old graphics and layouts so that you do not have to create something brand new each time. Adobe Express allows you to turn any project into a template so that you can easily create a new project from a previous design. It also has a ton of pre-made templates made by expert designers, which you can quickly customize for your brand. While Adobe Express is geared towards new creators, professional designers can also benefit from our quick and easy marketing tools. You can import customized assets made in programs like Illustrator or Photoshop into Adobe Express to quickly and easily create branded marketing assets on the go. You can also create your own custom templates to quickly and easily remix. If your content lives on multiple social channels, repurpose and re-optimize your content to cater towards the platform you're posting to. As in, no landscape graphics on your stories, please. In Adobe Express, you can quickly resize your assets to the correct social media platform you're posting to with just one click. If you're creating a social campaign across different platforms, you can utilize the multi-page feature to create multiple posts in a single project. Once you've created all of your content, you can cut out a step by posting directly to your social channels in Adobe Express. With the built-in content scheduler, you can easily schedule all of your content in advance so that you can spend more time working on your craft and interacting with your audience. With the help of Adobe Express, you now have content creation and marketing tools at your fingertips to help you stand out on Etsy so that you can spend more time on making things that you love. Make sure to use your four-month free trial of Adobe Express, and there are still some fun Adobe perks ahead. We will be hosting two follow-up sessions in the Etsy Success event space. These sessions are available only on etsyup.com, so be sure to register for the upcoming sessions where we will be doing an even deeper dive into what we covered today and more. Sometimes it could be just quiet totally space out in that moment. And I can transfer all those happiness or frustration, sadness, grief into a vase. My name is Mandy Wang. My shop is Mandy XY Wang. I sell ceramic vases, bowls, and cups. I started when I was very little. I asked my parents to take me to a ceramic studio to throw on the wheel. And that was my first time touching clay. And I love it. When I went to Texas State, I minor in art and I end up with ceramic studio. And that's where I got my full training. When my dad passed away, Clay helped me through the grieving process. From then on, Clay become more than just Clay. Clay is me. 
As the pandemic started, I lost my job. I got laid off. Selling on Etsy gave me an outlet to connect to the world through my clay. I followed Ami years ago because she's a fashion and beauty influencer, and I love her content. So when the team first approached me, I was just shocked and surprised. I create two lines. One is more feminine, and the other is more masculine. With the size, with the time, and the intensity, it made me realize I can accomplish way more than I thought I could. My daughter is sensitive to emotion. That's why I feel like I can see myself in her. I don't know what kind of passion or interest that she will land、uh, when she grows up. We want to protect her as much as possible, but she will be on her own. <laughs> I hope that. Having a creative outlet will help her through all the ups and downs. Being a clay person, there's so many unknowns. My goal for my shop is continue to stay true to myself and enjoy making clay. Hi everyone! I hope you're enjoying the event so far. Let me know in the chat where you're joining us from. I'm here today at the Etsy headquarters in Brooklyn, and I know it's early in the day for some of you and late at night for others, since we have sellers joining us from all over the world. Just a reminder: keep an eye out for some fun surprises that will be given out during the stream. So, as a seller myself, I know it can be challenging sometimes to come up with fresh ideas for marketing and social media as the landscape seems to constantly evolve, and it sometimes feels like there's new social trends or platforms and strategies to learn in order to stay competitive and get noticed by potential buyers. That's why I'm super excited for this next session. Etsy social media expert Bridget will walk us through some innovative social marketing strategies relevant for sellers at. All stages. So Bridget is a professional content creator and social media influencer who can help you build your brand voice and connect with new audiences. So, with no further ado, let's welcome Bridget. Thanks, Isabella. Hi, my name is Bridget, and I work on the Etsy social media team as a content creator, which means I create video content for our Etsy social channels, mostly Instagram and TikTok. So you may have seen my face before. A little bit of background on me: I first picked up a video camera when I was in elementary school, and haven't been able to stop creating ever since. I graduated from the Fashion Institute of Technology in 2010 with a degree in advertising and marketing communications, and after that, I went after my first dream job by literally creating. A video to introduce myself to the brand, and it worked. And since then, I've been really, really lucky to go on and work for and partner with a handful of brands I really admire, such as Etsy. Something that has really helped me grow my own social following was finding my content niche and my audiences online. So my content focuses on home decor, natural beauty, intuitive living, style, and things that make me laugh. Finding my niche really helped me find and grow an audience that I really feel like I connect with. And since I mentioned style is a niche I love, I have to give a shout out to the items I'm wearing today. So this is a pair of vintage '50s hoops from seller Patricia、um, Louverdo. This necklace is from Omi Woods, and this is a vintage '80s locket from Nina Martinez of Shop Cucarachas. So. We all know that social media can be a great way to grow a small business.、Um, something that many people assume is that it takes a lot of effort and time to utilize as a marketing tool. But honestly, what it really takes to make your social media effective is consistency. It's also important to have an understanding of who your target audience is and where they're spending their time on social on social media. So while we're not going to get into audience discovery or platform specifics in this session, we do have a wide variety of additional tools. And resources to help if you're just starting out on your social media journey, including Etsy U courses and our ultimate guide to social media marketing, which can be found in our seller handbook. 
Today, we're gonna to be focusing on three strategies for promoting your business on social media. So we've got live shopping, product drops, and content marketing. Let's get started. Live shopping is becoming more and more prevalent across social media with platforms like TikTok, Instagram, and even YouTube dipping their toes into this space. But what is live shopping and how can you make the most of it um, for your small business? Live shopping honestly can be as simple as going live on your channel of choice like Instagram or TikTok, talking directly to camera about the items that you offer in your shop. You can think of it as a DIY version of those live television shopping channels. Um, you can then direct people to visit your Etsy shop and purchase the items that you showcased during your stream. You could also use third-party streaming tools to create a more professional look and directly integrate your shopping links and even on-screen graphics. Well, I know that getting started with live shopping can be daunting, but there really are some awesome benefits to this approach. So going live on social, it offers you a chance to connect directly with your audience and with potential customers. It allows you to actively demonstrate the quality and the value of your products. You can answer questions about your processes or your items in real life using a more engaging format. Um, and live shopping also allows you to offer exclusive or first look items that might not yet be available and to generate excitement around them. At Etsy, we're exploring ways to bring live shopping to life for our buyers and our sellers. We actually recently did a pilot program for the Etsy market where we went live with 19 sellers within the Etsy app. So the sellers were able to showcase their processes and their items for thousands of live viewers and generate buzz and excitement around their products. So another method of generating buzz and excitement is with product drops. We've seen several Etsy, se Etsy sellers take advantage of product drops and restock announcements to to attract shoppers. So what is a product drop? A product drop popularized by sneaker companies and startups is when you release a limited edition item to hype and fanfare, and then when that item is sold out, it's sold out, never to be seen again. And then similar to exclusive product drops, there are product restocks, which are also popular among our Etsy community, especially for sellers who make really labor-intensive items like pottery. A restock is just what it sounds like. It's when you add more items to your shop in bulk. So both product drops and restock announcements are a great way to generate ongoing buzz for your shop on social media. This marketing tactic is also great to promote around the holiday season when there are shoppers looking for unique giftable items. You could consider creating a limited edition holiday collection that's only available for one to two months and then making that a seasonal activation so that repeat buyers can return to your shop and buy from that collection every year. And the last topic we'll touch on today is content marketing, which is a broad term generally associated with creating things like blog articles and videos to promote your business. I know that as a small business, you're asked not only to be the creator or curator of your items, but also the customer service rep and the sole marketer of your business. So when you're wearing so many hats, it's important to make the most of the content that you create. So listing photos, listing videos, even your about section on your Etsy shop, these are all examples of content marketing. So how do you make the most of the content that you're creating and be the most efficient? Cross promotion. This means that you're sharing the content that you're creating for your shop across your social media channels, especially video content. In my experience, the most impactful content that you can create is video. And while I know videos can be really time intensive, intensive to develop, they can also help deliver the largest engagement and they can live in the most places. So videos that you create for social platforms can be shared across channels. And then you can also share videos that you create using Etsy's Explore feature, which is our new video content sharing channel within the Etsy app. Explore is a great option for sharing your content because these videos will link directly back to your shop so potential buyers can easily purchase the items that are featured in your Explore videos. Video is also a great way to grow your social media audience. So most of the major social platforms these days are shifting the focus of their algorithms to prioritize videos. Um, so that's why sharing video content on channels like Instagram and TikTok is a great way to reach new potential customers who might be interested in your products. One important thing about creating videos for social media is to find out what kind of content your audience resonates with and then create more 
of that type of content. So for example, let's say you've created a process video and a pack and order with me video, and you see that the process video is generating more engagement. So since it seems like process videos are what your audience is reacting to, you can try creating additional process videos to um, see if they continue to perform well, building on that initial momentum. Honestly, continuing to experiment and learn from your content performance is really important so that you can make the most of the effort that you're making. I know many of you are already out there creating content as part of your business strategy and driving people to your Etsy shop. Did you know that we recently launched Etsy's Creator Co., which is a social-first, seller-focused portion of Etsy's affiliate program? Through this program, you can promote your Etsy shop on social media, and you can earn commission while doing so. Our Creator Co. program offers 4 to 5% commission, depending on where you're located, for every sale you drive to your shop and other shops on Etsy. If you're approved to join, you can generate and place your tracking link in your bio on TikTok or your link tree, and it's as simple as that. You create your content as usual, and you could earn a passive income while doing so. If you're interested in joining Creator Co., you can apply for the affiliate program using the link on etsyup.com and register for our follow-up session where you can learn even more. So, Let's review what we've covered today. First, live shopping, which is a great way to connect directly with potential customers. We also talked about the value of limited edition product drops and restock announcements, which can help generate buzz and excitement around the items that you're creating. And finally, we covered content marketing, especially the importance of both developing original video content and cross-promotion as a way to grow your audience and promote your shop. So I know we covered a lot today, but in addition to be able to uh, rewatch this session, we're also going to be hosting a follow-up Etsy U session in our event space in the coming weeks, and you'll be able to ask any additional questions you have about how you can use social media to grow your business, so be sure to check out additional resources in our seller event space and our seller social channels at Etsy Success for more tips on running your Etsy shop and growing your social media following. Most people, when they think of crystals and minerals, it's in the nice, fine jewelry that they wear. But the raw specimens are just as beautiful, and that's why we really wanted to create everyday pieces that people can have in their homes that have the raw mineral there. I'm Val Tauber, and this is Ray Tauber, and we're the owners and founders of Talon Burt. We created a signature geo look instead of a concrete base. We crack it open and we fill it with all sorts of minerals and crystals that my wife and I actually mined ourselves through recreational mining. Our studio space started in our kitchen. We first started with like six listings on Etsy just to kind of get a feel to see if people would like this. It just blew up. Now we have two storefronts. We moved on to a major headquarters location and that's where we actually produce everything. We cast and sand and wash all the pieces. The stones get embedded. We outline each piece in the liquid gold leaf or silver. And after that, it heads onto the fulfillment shelves and then from there it gets packaged up and shipped out to our customers. One of the greatest things about a brick and mortar store is 85% of the brands in here are either women owned or minority owned. And they're all small businesses. We're kind of giving back to the maker community that we love being a part of. Etsy is honestly the reason we are where we are today. We employ about 12 employees. This new space has allowed us to produce candles and crystal infused oil diffusers. We fulfilled probably tens of thousands of geo planters at this point. So just having the support from Etsy along our journey has been great. We want people to look at our business and see that if we can do it, they can do it too. Welcome back everyone. I cannot wait to start my holiday shopping this year and I'm always on the hunt for great gifts on Etsy. So since we have all of you here today, can y'all give me some ideas? <laughs> Tell me in the live chat what unique items you plan to sell in your shop this holiday season and what makes them so special. And while I take a peek at all of your answers in the chat and start adding them to my holiday wish list, I'm going to pass it over to our next speaker. So up next, Dana is joining us again to chat with Etsy sellers Justin Nelson from Fernway Woodworking and Julia Rosie from Petite Flower Studios. 
In this session, they'll discuss some of the ways that they've evolved their business strategies over the past few years in response to some of the major changes that have taken place, along with helpful learnings for other sellers to consider. Welcome back, Dana. Hello again, everyone, and welcome. If you're just joining us, I'll introduce myself again. My name is Dana Isom Johnson, and I'm the Etsy trend expert. I just made a quick outfit change into this handmade linen jumpsuit because I wanted to show off another amazing fit from the one, the only Simona of, shop, of the shop off on. Also, did you peep my earrings? They're an Etsy design award winner. This shop is called It's All Culture, so just wanted to shot them out. All right, so now we're gonna get back to it. I have two more amazing Etsy sellers for our second panel. I would love to welcome Justin and Julia. Thanks for having yes. us. <laughs> okay, so uh, I want you guys to tell me a little bit about yourself. Tell me your, your Etsy shop name, how long you've been selling on Etsy. Julia, let's start with you. So I own an Etsy shop called Petite Flower Studio. I own it with my mom and we have been selling since 2014, so it has been a while. And we specialize in baby showers, bridal showers, and weddings banners and digital products wow mm -hmm. that's that's we'll, we'll get into that later yeah, but <laughs> okay um, Justin tell me about your Etsy shop I started Fernway Woodworking in 2015 uh, we're a small batch furniture studio and we design everything in-house and then make everything in-house with me and my small team of woodworkers okay I can't wait to dig in okay hold on that so as we all know the past two and a half years have been challenging for everyone around the world these challenges presented themselves in many different ways for many different people and the unusual circumstances required business owners to take a look at their business strategies and question if they needed to change. Many business owners were forced to quickly pivot in order to keep up with the changing world around them. I'd like to take this moment to give a shout out to all of our wonderful Etsy sellers, including everyone watching today. It was truly inspiring to see all the ways our community rose to the occasion during a very difficult time. I want to recognize you for all the passion and dedication you've shown. It has not gone unnoticed. Now, looking back on these last couple of years, I think we have a great opportunity today to chat about the lessons learned because there were a lot of them. So let's turn it back to Justin and Julia because both of you, okay, have had to pivot over the last two years. So I wanna hear about each of your stories from 2020 until now and how you adjusted your business strategy. Julia, I wanna start with you. You sell downloadable templates and invitations, particularly invitations for weddings and in-person mm -hmm. events. Hello, oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I can imagine that your business was impacted for sure. Mm -hmm. So tell us more about that experience. Yeah, so 2020, nobody was doing bridal showers, weddings, baby showers. Our business was definitely, definitely impacted by it. It was a hard year, uh, but as you said, we had to pivot. There was no time to waste. It was also the year that I quit my full-time job to work on my small business this full time. Wow. So our Etsy shop became me and my mom's both full-time jobs and we had to quickly come up with a game plan. And one of the things that really helped us was to come up with a product that people were still buying even though the pandemic was happening. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that we actually did was we invested into our nursery digital wall art because even though moms ah. weren't doing baby showers, they were still decorating for their nurseries. And we already had a, ba a customer base of moms. Uh, and those products were a huge success. We definitely invested a lot of time on that. And also because of the holiday season, yeah. people were really excited for Christmas. People wanted to still decorate their houses, even though you know celebrating the holidays looked a little bit different. Mm -hmm. People were still decorating. And yeah. we also invested into creating holiday or Christmas decoration products, and we did Christmas banners. So those products, they definitely helped us a lot during that time. I mean, what a great way to pivot. Mm -hmm. Home was at the forefront for pretty much all of us. Yes. We poured so much into making our home like a true sanctuary. Mm -hmm. And so this was a great opportunity for those new parents to say, oh no, we're gonna level up the nursery and mm -hmm. here's an easy solution to do that. And I feel like the same was true for celebrations. Like we didn't, we still wanted to celebrate. Exactly. It was just all about the backdrop. So mm -hmm. you guys were smart enough to really take that on and not allow your business to, to 
really go under, but like mm -hmm. be impacted in a positive way. Exactly. Okay, yeah. so Justin, let's talk about your business because your business relies on materials and sourcing materials like wood, and obviously that also underwent some sort of shortages over the last few years. So how did you adapt to these changes? And were there any other noticeable, noticeable adjustments that you needed to uh, pivot your strategy? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it was a scary time because for a while there, orders just kind of stopped and we weren't really sure what to expect. And we were actually moving shops at that point too. So um, as physical far as physical locations, physical locations, yeah. Ah. Um, so as far as raw materials, we had um, we've always been made to order, and the way that we make money doing you know custom furniture in America is um, by batching all of our parts, um, and so we we batch small batches, and so our lead times are 12 to 14 weeks, even before the pandemic, and we mm. didn't actually have to increase those because we were able to react fast enough. Um, so with especially with hardwoods. Um, there was such a high demand coming out of the kilns that it was just hard to get your hands on it. So when we knew that there was a big order coming, usually we would just buy like what we need for the next few batches of furniture. Mm -hmm. um, but we started just realizing how hard it was going to be to, mm -hmm. to be able to do that. So we just bought everything we could get our hands on. As soon as it came to our supplier, um, instead of picking out what we wanted, we were like, yeah. we'll take the whole bundle. And part of that was, it made it difficult from a cash flow situation, but we were helped with the SBA small business loan. Um, and so for us, we stocked up, we, we bought less often, but a lot more volume. Ah. So. Okay, and that, that way you were fully stocked, but because the demand in home furnishings was so high, you didn't really have to worry about whether or not you were gonna run through the materials. I also felt like during that time, so many people were again focusing on their home that when they would go to a big box retailer and they would be hit with the lead times would be up to six mm -hmm. months, they had that realization of, oh my goodness, I can shop with an independent yeah. maker potentially even get it custom made. Did you find that to be true? Absolutely, yeah. Once the once the initial shock of the pandemic kind of wore off and people were starting to invest in their homes, mm -hmm. our sales um, just started to skyrocket and we weren't quite sure what was happening at that point. But it was awesome because we had reacted fast and so we didn't increase our lead times while all the big box stores were increasing theirs and so we were actually competitive from a lead time standpoint for yeah. the first time ever actually Love that. but it worked yeah. out really well love that okay so looking back is there anything that you would have done differently if you could go back in time and give yourself some advice what would it be justin let's kick it with you this time yeah um for me i think a big thing that I've learned is when the slow times hit, like especially at the beginning of the pandemic, it was just really scary. All of our major um, design events were canceled. Um, and so I, I was honestly afraid we were gonna lose the business. And so uh, the thing that I learned through kind of the, the ups and downs of the pandemic was um, to just stay calm and mm, when we're yeah. slow <laughs> to react in a good way. So now I know that when orders are slower for a period of time, we um, we work on our shop so that we're more um, efficient when yeah. things pick back up. Mm -hmm. We do, we're able to back stock parts for us. So we'll do like 400 chair legs or something like that. Yeah. Um, so then when orders pick back up, we're able to be more effective and more efficient. Another big thing that we invest in is um, is like online marketing and stuff mm -hmm. um, and just like how do we reach our sellers but then uh, a big thing is also making sure that our processes are really smooth so that yeah. then it's a good time to invest in that because yeah. then when things get busy you're even more efficient so you learn to give yourself some breathing time yeah, and absolutely. breathing is good <laughs> breathing is good okay Julia what did you learn I think one of the biggest things that I've learned that we actually did during the pandemic, but it's better to do it before, is to cut costs in some sort of ways. One of the things that we did is we went through all our subscriptions that we had, um, that we used for our business, and we realized there were some subscriptions that we were not using, so we just didn't mm. pay for those anymore. We cut those costs. Or packaging, for example, we used to do a really nice, pretty packaging, and we still do, but yeah. we chose different materials, different supplies, that would cut the cost a little bit, and mm -hmm. at the end, it would give us a bigger product. It. Okay, love that. We love a cost cut. Yes, we love that. Sure. Um, okay, so these were great piece of it, pieces of advice, but when you're specifically thinking about your community, right, your fellow mm -hmm. Etsy sellers, what in the past two years 
a piece of advice would you give to them that maybe you know they don't have a woodworking furniture business they don't have um, an invitation paper goods business like what is top level great piece of advice for your fellow community members I think one of my biggest advices advice is to also going back to the money aspect of it is mm -hmm. to if possible save up because rainy days will come and sometimes we don't think they will but they do and the pandemic really taught us that and like i said our business was very impacted by it throughout yeah. the whole year and thankfully we had a little cushion we had a little money saved mm -hmm. and uh, that would be my biggest advice save a little bit if you can because those rainy days they will come okay justin how about for you a habit that I've been making for the last few years is always thinking through my one and five year goals for the business. Mm. And um, I, th I feel like a lot of people hear that, or I used to think about like one and five year goals as being like, I need to get there and if I don't get there, I've failed. But I think it's actually just a good habit because it forces you to think, what are the actions that I'm taking today that will affect me in five years? Whether, yeah. like the business is gonna change in five years, I don't mm -hmm. know what it'll look like. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think about those, if not every day, every week. Mm -hmm. and. Wow. And then that helps me make um, intelligent. I, I don't get distracted by shiny things as often. <laughs> <laughs> if there's a new tool or, that I want or yeah. a marketing opportunity or whatever it is, I, I have it in perspective with, oh, well, will that help me get to my where mm -hmm. I want to be in a year and in five mm -hmm. years, um, as opposed to just like, ooh, this seems exciting. Let's yeah. do that. That yeah. makes it. And I feel like a foundational piece of both of what you're talking about, too, is also the entire point of this conversation, which is about being able to pivot and being nimble mm -hmm. and being willing to change when mm -hmm. needed and not being so laser focused on what you think is the right thing yeah. right now. Like, mm -hmm. be nimble. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Okay, but are there any unexpected changes that you made to your business that happened as a reaction to these circumstances or any circumstance really? And it kind of made you look back and say to yourself, this is incredible. Why wasn't I doing this earlier? Let's let's start with you, Julia. I was gonna say, I think the biggest thing for us is our holiday collection. Before our, the during October, November, December time, those are really slow months for us because people weren't really doing weddings. They mm -hmm. were more focused into the holiday season. And when we really invested in, uh, in our holiday products, we saw that our December months and November months were actually doing really well, which in the past didn't happen. Huh. And that was the year that we sold the most Christmas banners and we also did Christmas digital downloads and people really loved it. And yeah. one of the things that I've learned, which I kind of knew already, but <laughs> what I experienced is that people love to shop for holiday gifts or decor at Etsy. Yes. It's huge and yes. it's one of also my suggestions for sellers if possible if you can have a holiday collection because people love that on Etsy hmm Justin you and I offline we were maybe chatting about some <laughs> <We> things. <were>. <laughs> <laughs> but but I, I want to ask you the same question yeah for us um, a big lesson learned was freight shipping mm. um, we our furniture is not flat packable that's kind of what makes it special honestly. yeah, yeah. Um, it's very organic and shapely and so we, we, shipping has always been a nightmare for bigger things like that. Um, and, and that's kind of a minority for Etsy sellers, but there are a lot of furniture people out there that just struggle with shipping. Um, and yeah. so, so we used to freight ship everything and the pandemic kind of made that impossible because freight costs were, um, I mean, it was literally exponential increases. Like I would quote something for, um, like an Etsy client. And yeah. then I, by the time we actually shipped it, it would be twice as much wow. or more. Sometimes it was like four times. And wow. so then, and that I just couldn't do that obviously. And yeah. so, um, and, and part of that also was just crate costs. Like we couldn't afford to buy materials to make crates. Mm -hmm. So we shifted to white glove shipping and it's amazing because you don't have really? to crate things. And so, so now we just do that. And um, every once in a while we'll freight ship, but that was a big change in the business. Th there were days freight shipping and like making crates out in the sun in my yeah. driveway yeah. where I was just like, why am I doing this? I want to shut no. the business down. Yeah. <laughs> no. So, um, so learning the, the whole white glove process, um, for us has been a game changer. Game changers. Okay. Love that. And 
The same way that we're thinking about changes in terms of your business, uh, and sellers had to make a lot of those changes, I think buyers also had to adapt to some major changes. How do you manage expectations with customers? And is there any advice you would give our seller community about customer service? So Justin, let's kick it off with you. Yeah, I feel like sometimes I get questions um, that to me feel like they're out of the blue, or mm. maybe they don't make sense to me because I'm just so, I'm so in it. <laughs> and yeah. and what I've learned from that is that those questions mean that I'm not communicating something clearly. Like it feels obvious to me because I haven't communicated it clearly enough um, through like our our um, about section on mm -hmm. Etsy or you know the business description. Like if people are asking questions about where we source parts, then they don't understand that it's all made in house. And so yeah. so I've learned that um, you know having frequently asked questions handy to give to people, mm -hmm. whether it's on a DM or part of um, like the our Etsy profile, mm -hmm. um, that has been really key. And I'm, I'm realizing like the more I get a question, the more it shows that I'm not communicating this just through kind of the ethos or the about section mm -hmm. of our business. Yeah, I mean, especially I think, you know, shoppers today, many of us, and I'll say us because we're all shoppers, right? Yeah. But mm -hmm. we are so programmed to expecting a, a very certain thing every mm -hmm. single time that we mm -hmm. shop no matter where we are. Mm -hmm. So overly communicating mm -hmm. yes. is always yeah. a great mm -hmm. option, right? Yeah. And Julia, what about you? Yeah, I agree to that. And also I do want to say when a pandemic hits or crisis happens, people are very understanding as well. When we have problems with maybe shipping or our digital products, people were very, very understanding about it. It's like everyone came together. They all knew what was happening. So that was really nice. Um, Justin talked about about section. I do want to talk about the announcement section. If you mm. ever have any shipping delays or anything in like digital downloads, if you're behind orders, anything like that, talk about it under your announcements as well because people do read that. And also be honest with your shoppers. If you are behind, if there's something happening, tell them yeah. because they will be able to tell if something wrong is happening. People notice that. Yeah. So just be honest. People are super understanding and be fast. Don't waste your time. If you know you're going to be behind orders, let them know. Do not waste your shopper's time. Yeah, especially I feel like as we come very close to the holiday season, mm -hmm. especially for yes. you and celebrations start ramping up. You want to make sure that people very clearly understand yes. what to expect during mm -hmm. that busy time, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, these were all such, such great points. Now, as we remember, another really important thing to communicate with customers is shipping policies, especially as we approach the holidays, which we just chatted about. Something we're all thinking about is shipping preparedness. Etsy has some great ways to help sellers set expectations with buyers. Additionally, the Etsy team is hard at work planning to help make this a smooth holiday season for sellers. For example, similar to last year, if there are carrier delays, we'll let sellers know, but also share messages to buyers across our site so they're aware of delays and understand that they're due to issues with the carrier, not the seller. This can help reduce messages from buyers about unforeseen shipping carrier issues. All right, I just wanna come back to you guys and just say thank you again so much for being with us today. You know I'm such a big fan of your shops um, and I'm wishing you all the best on this holiday season and beyond. Thank, thank you. you so much. So thank, thank you so you. much. Thanks, and thanks to everyone for tuning in. I started my business not knowing I was going to start a business. <laughs> Woodworking specifically was the best way I could translate the ideas in my mind onto a product. My name is Melanie Abrantes, and I am a woodworker and designer based out of Oakland, California. And I make cork and wood products for the home. I am half Portuguese and half Filipino. Cork is a huge part of my heritage. When I was younger, we visited my grandfather and I would see all the cork products that, you know, just existed in Portugal. And I was just so fascinated by that. I think it just made me realize that cork could be more than just a cork board or even, you know, a wine cork. And I want to make actual product out of it. 
Once the pandemic, you know, hit, what was obviously selling were my carving kits. I wrote a book about carving um, a couple years back, and it's something that I taught a lot of workshops in person. Um, and my kits were always something that was popular, but it went crazy when the pandemic hit because people were at home. It was a banana bread making time. People wanted to create new hobbies and everyone has been incredibly obsessed with carving. It's a very meditative process carving is and I think that really helped people kind of get their mind off some things. My proudest moment is when I'm able to see people have my pieces in their home. It just, it's a little part of me that they're able to have, so it just makes me excited to think that it's gonna bring a smile to their faces. Y'all, I love Melanie's carved bowls and vases. They are so beautiful. So by now you all know that I work here at Etsy, and some of you may also know that I'm actually a seller myself. So I've been selling on Etsy for almost 10 years and I make flower crowns for dogs. Part of my job here at Etsy is to educate sellers on how to optimize their shops and listings. And a common question that I get asked all the time is how to turn around a listing that seems to be underperforming. So today I'm gonna to share a few quick tips that you can try in your own shop when a listing seems to have hit a sales slump. So. When you notice a listing is no longer receiving many views or views have stopped converting to sales, there are steps you can take to diagnose what could be happening and determine how to respond. So first, you'll need to gather more information. You'll wanna analyze your Etsy stats, do some research on e-commerce trends, and ask for feedback from your peers. So when analyzing stats, review longer timeframes, at least 30 days. Compare year-over-year -year data, if you can. So longer timeframes give you a clearer sense of how your numbers are trending. Avoid making assumptions or reacting to buyer behavior observed in short timeframes. Keep an eye on what inventory is moving through your shop quickly and think critically about why it's selling at a higher rate. Look at your search terms list in stats to help determine which high performers are bringing the most traffic to your shop and think about developing a more robust product line based on these top items. If your shop has been open for a year, look at how your shop was performing during the same time last year. This can help you recognize and plan for seasonal sales trends in your shop. Next, you'll wanna dive into market research. First, capture insights from questions and reviews. Pay attention to the details that your customers are sharing and the questions that they're asking. Encourage buyers to leave feedback with a short note in the message to buyers section of the Etsy order confirmation email. Communication and feedback can help you learn more about the unique needs, use cases, and expectations of your customers. Next, learn about relevant lifestyles from social media. So think of social media as an opportunity to communicate directly with your customers. Pay close attention to which posts generate more conversation than others, so you can lean into that type of content later in the future. Finally, you'll wanna ensure you get feedback from your peers. So visit community.etsy.com and share a link to your listing with other sellers in the forums. There are many sellers there who give great advice. So our seller community is an extremely valuable resource. Don't miss out on the opportunity for their insight. Now that you've checked out your stats, reviewed market research, and received feedback from other Etsy sellers, you're ready to take some next steps into search engine optimization, also known as SEO. So products can only perform well when they're easy to find, right? Optimizing your products for Etsy search requires putting yourself in the mindset of shoppers and routinely revisiting your titles, your tags, and your descriptions to make sure they're working for you. Consider holidays, seasonality, marketplace trends, and the words and phrases that people typically use to describe items like yours. And be sure to consider also how those words and phrases can shift over time. I'd also suggest you revisit any one word tags or terms that you're using and really try to stretch yourself and think of some new compound descriptive phrases that buyers might be using to find your pieces. Doing so can help you reach a new audience and potentially tap into a broader customer base. And if you're unsure where or how to start making these adjustments, my best advice would be to go back to your shop stats. 
If you find that you have words and phrases that are not appearing in your shop stats consistently, then these keywords aren't working as well for you as they could be. So you might consider removing these keywords and trying out others. This can be a time intensive process, but it provides you with an opportunity to experiment with new titles and new tags if you find that the older ones aren't as beneficial to your listing's performance. Next, let's discuss the conversion rate element of search ranking. So remember, there are two phases of how Etsy search works, query matching and ranking. So with query matching, a buyer enters a query into Etsy search and we look at all the inventory of listings that match that query. We just discussed updates for keywords and phrases to help with this portion. Next comes ranking. So behind the scenes of search, we rank matching listings based on a variety of factors. One key factor is how well a listing converts. So how many people viewed it and then made a purchase to determine whether or not buyers are interested in it, which boosts that listings quality score and its placement in search results. So let's go over a few things that can impact a listings conversion rate. First, I want to talk about photos. So online shoppers rely on photos so much since they can't pick up, examine an item before buying it. Your first photo should be click worthy. So grabbing a buyer's attention and encouraging them to click on it to learn more. Your other listing photos and video should show what makes your item unique from every angle. Next is shipping. So fast and affordable shipping options and competitive prices can make listings more attractive to shoppers. So aim for short yet realistic processing times and consider opting into Etsy's free shipping guarantee and offering sales and discounts periodically. Next, don't forget about listing descriptions. So keep them short and informative, but still engaging and written in your brand's voice. Make sure you're highlighting the key details there too. Finally, additional elements of your shop, including policies, your about section, branded elements like your shop banner, and great reviews from other buyers can help shoppers feel more confident and excited about making a purchase. So if you try optimizing all of the above and it still doesn't seem to move the needle, consider running a promotion on your listing. So shoppers love finding a good deal and running some sort of discount could help you understand if the performance was actually more due to the item's price point. No matter what, remember to track your progress and keep on experimenting. So those are some quick tips that you can easily apply to any listing you have that's underperforming. And as I just mentioned, search engine optimization is a really important way to bring traffic to your listings. So this is the perfect time to hand it off to our next speaker, Ritish, who is the global head of SEO here at Etsy. Welcome, Ritish. Thank you, Isabella. Hi, everyone. I'm Ritish, and I lead SEO at Etsy. Today, I'm going to talk about how you can approach Google SEO. To add more to what Isabella was just talking to you about, search engine optimization is the process of improving web pages to make it easier for people to find what they are looking for online. Search engines help users find answers to their questions, and SEO makes it easier for both users and search engines to understand what's on a web page. Before we dive into some best practices, let's talk about the difference between Etsy SEO and Google SEO. Etsy SEO, or Etsy search, only refers to searches that happens on Etsy.com. Let's say you go to Etsy.com in your browser, you see the search bar on the top, and then enter a term like linen dress with pockets. Etsy SEO is the process for optimizing for those searches. Google SEO, on the other hand, refers to searches on Google.com. If you go to Google and type in personalized cutting board with handles, that's a Google search. This is what my team focuses on for Etsy. Among other things, we work on increasing the visibility of Etsy listings and Etsy shops um, in search engines like Google and Bing. So keep in mind, SEO is not something where you as a seller can do everything. We are working behind the scenes to help drive traffic to sellers. We do a lot of work with ratings, reviews, price information, all of which impacts Google SEO. 
For instance, if you see an Etsy listing page on Google, our team added the rating, the number of reviews, the price information that you will see include in the search result. But why is Google SEO so important? Google is the most popular search engine in the world. It's estimated that Google processes 3.8 million searches per minute, in which, which is equal to 5.6 billion searches a day. Needless to say, that's huge. On Google, you have the potential to reach a wider audience of buyers, including people who haven't shopped on Etsy before. As sellers, there are two types of pages that work on to help improve your Google SEO. Shop pages and listing pages. There are three main ways that these pages can rank on Google. Firstly, there is Google search. This is the way that most people know how to find things on Google. If you go to google.com and type in, in a search, the result that shows up are Google search results. Here is an example of what a shop page looks like on Google search result. These will mainly show up for what are called branded searches, which are essentially people searching for your name of the shop or business. Here is an example of a listing page may look like on a Google search result. Listing pages can show up for branded searches, but they can also show up for people searching for products on Google. This is an area where Etsy sellers can really shine. For example, you could have someone searching for blue ceramic 1960s mid-century modern vase or personalized necklace for mom and see Etsy listings showing up for Google search result. Next is Google Images. When you make a search through Google Images, it will appear as a result tab underneath search bar. A lot of people use Google Images to find what they are looking for. So make sure that you're providing high quality images so they may rank. Here is an example of what an Etsy listing page looks like on a Google Images. Finally, there is Google Video. Google Video is similar to Google Images. You can find a video tab underneath the search bar. Here is an example of a seller's listing video that shows up on Google Video's search result. This is another great place where you can have your listing actually appear. Now that you know where you can rank on Google search results, let's discuss things you can do today to optimize your shop page and the listing page to increase your potential visibility. When optimizing shop pages on Google SEO, there are four things to keep in mind. Firstly, add images to your shop page. We discussed the importance of Google Images earlier, so try add multiple images to your page. Additionally, when writing shop description, include information like your background, highlight your years of experience, any credentials, how you got into creating basically why people should buy from you. Talk about your creative process. Google likes to see your expertise, your authority in your niche, and your trustworthiness as a seller. And it's important information for potential buyers too. Another piece of advice is to fill out as much information as possible when it comes to payment options, policies, delivery options, and your return policy. This isn't just an SEO thing, it's also a better user experience. Returns and exchanges are critical information that a shopper can consider when looking to buy a product. We also encourage you to add videos to your shop page using the About section. When optimizing your listing pages for Google SEO, there are five thing, tips to consider. Write listing titles that accurately reflect your product you're selling. A person should be able to read your title and immediately understand the listing. Put the most important words first. The first 50, 60 characters will appear in the Google search engine results page. Avoid repeating phrases over and over again, which can be construed as keyword stuffing, which is when someone loads a web page with keywords or numbers in an attempt to manipulate a site's ranking. This could have a negative effect on your listing performance and also not very readable for a buyer. When writing listing descriptions, be as clear and descriptive as possible. The first few lines should focus on the product. For instance, 
Include information about sizing, different colors, materials, features, and any customization available. Use shorter paragraph and bulleted lists for readability. Fill out all fields of information possible, including payment options, policies, delivery options, along with frequently asked questions. Payment and shipping information in particular is very critical because it can be a decision factor for buyers. If you're really descriptive, that will help SEO. Additionally, add multiple product images and add descriptive alt text for each image. Alt text, which stands for alternative text, is designed to describe images for people with visual impairment. And it can also help your page appear in Google Images. For alt text, you'll want to accurately describe what's shown in a photo. You can include information about color, texture, and the material too. Once you upload a photo, you'll be able to hover over the image and see a pencil icon. Click on the pencil icon to add the alt text. Finally, adding listing videos. They are a great way to bring your product to life for buyers and to increase your visibility in Google search result. Now that we have talked about steps to improve Google SEO for your shop and listing pages, here's how you find Google has indexed your pages and the hard work is paying off. According to Google, a page is indexed if it has been visited by a Google crawler also known as Googlebot, analyzed your content and the meaning and stored in the Google index. Index pages can be shown in Google search results. Indexing is the most important part of showing up in Google search, but how do you check whether your shop pages and listing pages are being indexed by Google? It takes a few seconds. Go to google.com and type in site colon and add the URL. If the page shows up, Google has indexed the page. If your page isn't showing up, what can you do? One tactic is link building, which we'll discuss next. But remember that Etsy has an internal team dedicated to making improvement for search engines like Google and Bing that will help increase indexing. It's also our team's job to make changes that bring SEO traffic to sellers. SEO also takes time. Results rarely happen overnight. The last step tip for today is simple but important. Building quality links to your shop and listing pages from around the web. If you have your own website or a social media page like Facebook or Twitter or Instagram account, link out to your Etsy shop and listings. One word of caution, avoid spammy link building tactics. We don't recommend building links placement or working with any third party link building agencies to buy and build links to your shop page or listings. That may affect your Google rankings negatively. Now that we have covered some SEO tactics that you can do today, let's talk about the future. SEO is a big area of focus at Etsy. The team is constantly working on SEO improvements so that sellers can get more traffic from external search engines like Google and Bing. My team will be hosting a follow-up session in the seller events page to dig into this topic even more. So be sure to register etsyup.com. Thank you very much for joining me and I'll hand it over to our wonderful host, Isabella. Thank you, Ratish. That session was so informative, and I will definitely be using some of those tips for my own Etsy shop. Thank you all so much for joining us today for Etsy Up. We hope that you found Etsy Up insightful and will take away actionable tips to help you get prepared for the holiday season. If you're looking for a deeper dive into one or more of the topics that we covered here today, we have follow-up sessions that are linked over on EtsyUp.com. To continue the conversations around the themes that we covered today, head on over to the Etsy Success Forum at community.etsy.com where you can engage with follow-up prompts from some of our presenters. Thank you all so much for participating today. And from all of us here at Etsy, we wish you a great and busy holiday season ahead. Mm -hmm.